Hey guys, what's going on? It's your good buddy Sam, and it's time for another Max and Processing tutorial. Um, it's a beautiful and sunny day here in San Francisco, so no better way to spend it, I think, than to sit inside and play with computers, am I right? Um, just a quick announcement before we get started. I'm going to be teaching a Max course in uh, Paris this June. And if you live in Paris or know someone who does, I'm definitely looking for housing uh, just for that month of June. And that would be such a nice thing for you to do to hook me up. That would really be appreciated a great deal by people who are me. Um, but all that aside, let's go into the meat of this little discussion here. Uh, I'm going to show you how to make a little visualizer in processing by accepting OSC arrays from Max and then using them to draw. Um, so. How is this visualizer going to work? Well, and what's it going to be? What are we going to visualize? Um, you know, in this day and age, uh, we're so inundated with all of this kind of um, mimetic nonsense, internet garbage. I think it's time to depart from all of that and return to the abstract, to the pure, um, to kind of neo-formalism. So today we're just going to draw circles inside of circles. I mean, it doesn't get any more concentric circles. It doesn't get any more formalist than that. Um, so in this processing sketch, let's first save it. I'm going to save this as color, save it as formalism. Let's save it as formalism with a Z, because that's, that's cool. Um, and the first thing in this sketch that I want is to, well, you know, it's processing. So step one, void setup. Of course, actually make that a parenthesis. And then void draw. In case you're not hip to processing, don't worry, one day you will be. But the setup, this is the function where we do things like set everything up and draw. This is the function that's called once for each frame to actually draw um, that frame. Now let's add another variable up here, int num bands. This is the number of circles that we're going to, we don't really need to call it num bands. I guess that's idiotic. Let's just call it bands. Set that be equal to 100 for now. Um, it's also stroke, uh, it's, yeah, stroke hue. This is going to be the color of each circle. Let's make it 128. That's kind of like a sea green and a blue green sort of color. Um, that's all we need for now. So in setup, um, simple stuff, no fill because we're not going to be filling in these circles. Color mode HSB, hue saturation brightness um, because only scrubs use red, green, blue. Uh, lips mode center. Uh, <clears throat> this means that when we draw an ellipse, instead of specifying the origin point of that ellipse as the top left corner, um, this the origin point is the center of the ellipse. And you'll see what that means in a second. Uh, just for giggles, size, say 500, 800, a tall window that'll fit in this space over here. And frame.set resizable true so that we can resize the window and in draw let's just do background for now let's just do background 25 a nice sort of almost but not quite black run this by tapping this little run button and there's formalism right there so far it's extremely formal nothing but an enormous gray expanse perhaps recalling the enormous gray expanse that is the human condition or something like that um, if you subscribe to all that garbage. Okay, so let's uh, let's draw these circles. So the basic strategy, uh, I want to draw circles of increasing size um, all the way up to the width of the window. So it's a pretty straightforward way to do that. Obviously, we're going to use a for loop for int i equals zero, i less than bands plus i. Now, the thing that um, we want to do here uh, first, we should calculate the thickness of each band, or I suppose we can do that up here. So the thickness of each band um, is just going to be equal to the um, thickness of all the bands, which is half of the size of the window, um, divided by the number of bands. So the thickness will just be um, width, which is always defined. You can see it turned this nice, helpful shade of pink. Um, that's the width of the window, divided by the number of bands, um, divided by two. I think that will end up being correct. Um, and then all we have to do is set the stroke uh, to be stroke hue. And let's set the saturation to, I don't know, 220 and the brightness to 220. Uh, should be pretty good. 
And now we just need to calculate the um, size of this particular, the radius of this particular ellipse, each one of these concentric circles that we're going to be drawing. Um, so the radius of this particular ellipse should just be, let's, well, the innermost ellipse is going to, or circle, is going to have a radius of zero, and the outermost is going to have a radius of the width of the window. Um, so it's pretty simple. We just do float this, uh, so let's see, float circle width equals map um, i, whichever circle we happen to be at, which goes from zero up to bands. And let's map that from zero up to the width of the window. Make that a little bit wider. And finally, actually draw the ellipse. Ellipse, um, and the center point is width over two, height over two, the width and height of the window, and circle width, and circle width. Cool. Now if we run this joint, run this jimmy jam, there's our circle sitting in the, we got a little kind of uh, this aliasing, I guess this is aliasing, not strictly moiré patterning going on, but still kind of cool to look at. Anyway, there's our uh, whole, all our concentric circles looking real good. I think these are, these lines are half the width I want them to be. Maybe, what if we just do width divided by bands? Is that better? Looks exactly the same. Oh, we didn't do, okay, hold on. I forgot to do uh, stroke weight is equal to thickness. Let's try that. There we go. Those bands are looking a bit more thick. Just the way we got no nothing like thick bands, am I right? Love those thick, thick bands. Um, okay, so that's good. We've got our processing stuff going on here. But what I want is to be able to control these uh, bands in a cool way from Max. And the way that I'm going to do that is by making some of the bands thick and some of the bands thin. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So take a, take a look at this image here. Um, what I'm going to do is essentially add up a bunch of sine waves um, to generate this kind of higher order, not really higher order, but just a... a you know, a sum of signs, and use that to change the thickness of each of these bands. And you can kind of get a sense of what it's going to look like from this picture. Um, at places where that sum sign is high, we're going to make the bands thick, and where that sum sign is low, we're going to make the bands real skinny. Um, that's the basic idea. Let's get that working and processing really quick um, before we end up uh, doing it in max. So for each of these bands, let's um, compute the thickness according to these sum of signs. How many signs are we going to add up? Uh, for now, let's make it 8. Int signs equals 5. Okay, so first we need space to store the sum of all those signs. So float sign sum equals 0. And the other thing is that um, I want to use the uh, which each band, I want the innermost bands to be uh, have a phase of zero and the outermost bands to have a phase of two pi so that in the course of these circles going from the middle all the way to the outside, um, we'll see the, the whole uh, one cycle of these summed sinusoids. So to do that, I'm going to make a computer new value called phase and set that to be equal to um, we'll just scale i, which goes from 0 up to bands, to be in the range of 0 to 2 pi. And something that I think is really cute about processing is that you don't have to call 2 pi 2 pi. If you're one of those people who thinks that uh, pi, is, pi is a lie and the only true, the one true king is tau, then you can also call 2 pi tau. It's kind of cute, I guess. Um, cool. So actually, let's, sign, let's sum up these signs now. So 4 int uh, s equals 0, equals 0, s less than signs plus s, sign sum equals, uh, well, plus equals, so which is the same as saying sign, uh, sign sum is equal to sign sum plus sign of phase times s plus 1. So essentially we're just adding together the first five uh, overtones really of this fundamental sine tone and using that to compute the, the thickness of each of these bands. So now I've got the sum of signs for this particular circle. Um, having done that, that's going to be a value not actually between 0 and 1, but we're going to um, take the value that is centered at 0 and center it instead at 1. So we'll do sine sum 
equals map sign sum minus one one the so it's a, a sign sum is going to be centered at zero in other words between minus one and one and we're instead going to center it about one so we'll scale up in the range of zero to two um, it's possible that sine sum will be less than negative one and if that's the case then this value uh, the computed value of sine sum here after being remapped is going to be less than zero and if we try to make the thickness of a given circle less than zero processing is going to get mad and throw an error so we should change this to be sine sum equals max zero sine sum so this way um, there's no risk that uh, sine sum will be um, less than zero. Finally, down here, stroke weight equal to thickness times sine sum. And let's give this a run. Uh, phase I band zero tau. What's the you got? What's the problem? What's the problem? Unexpected token float. In what universe is that an unexpected token? Oh, I'm the fucking dumbest person of all time. <laughs> Need to put the word map in there. Man, that feels really dumb. Okay, sorry about that. Needed to put the word map in there. Problem solved. Let's give this a try. Cool, so now you can see these sine waves have been added together. We got nice thick waves in the center, and as they radiate outward, they get skinnier and skinnier. Um, we may have to massage some of these numbers a bit in future, but that looks pretty good for now. I'm gonna add some transparency to the stroke here. Set that equal to, uh, so now instead of using a full uh, full opacity stroke, I'm going to set the opacity to 160. 160 out of 255, yeah. Interesting kind of banding going on there. Okay, so we're making good progress. Uh, the thing is that right now we're adding all these signs together, and each one of them has full strength. The amplitude is 1, and I don't want that. I want to be able to control the amplitude of each one of these bands individually. Um, so, and I want to be able to control that from max. So the way that we're going to do that is to make an array up here. Um, and it's, this is going to be a floating point array. And it's going to hold the amplitude of each of these sine waves. So I'm going to call this amps. And this is the syntax for saying that that's an array. So, you know, not one float, but many floats. But down here in setup, we'll do amps equals new float array uh, so this makes amplitude into a new floating point array that has sign signs entries in it so in this case five and then down here with sign sum um, i'm going to add to sign sum that particular sine wave multiplied by uh, amps of s so uh, take the amplitude of that particular sine wave and multiply it by the sine wave in order to compute the sum. So in this way, we're going to be able to control the relative strength of each harmonic. Um, but now we want to be able to control these from max. So the first step to setting that up, well, you know, let's go ahead and open up max. Uh, I think I already had max open, yeah. And let's make a new, uh, let's zoom in a bit, and let's make a new multi-slider. Uh, and let's set the multi-slider, let's make it have five sliders, and the range will be from zero to one. Cool. So now let's make this a bit thicker. And we can make, oh, look at that, beautiful. Okay. Now given this, uh, all we need to do now is send these values to processing. So recall how we did that in the last tutorial. You make a UDP send object. Uh, pointed at localhost with the port number. I'm just going to use 12,000. For some reason, that's canonical. And let's set this using a function called um, setamps. So uh, let's see. I think we need to set this. I'm going to open up the inspector for this multi slider and make sure continuous data output is selected. And then make a message box. No, we need a prepend slash set amps and now this will set the amplitudes of each of these sine waves down in max so you can see what that looks like and um, back over in processing now all we need to do is make a function that will listen for this message set amps and then set the amplitude values here 
So um, the first step is to come up to sketch import library OSCP5. This of course is the open sound control library that will do handle these connections. Again, watch the last tutorial, tutorial 55, I think, for some more information on that. Uh, we need space to store that uh, OSC object. So we'll make a new variable up here, OSCP5 called Oscar. And then uh, down here in setup, we'll do Oscar equals new OSC P5, this 1200, and then Oscar dot plug this, the function to set the amps we'll call set amps, and the message, the OSC message we're looking for is slash set amps. Cool. Finally at the bottom here, void set amps. And now this is the important part. Uh, set amps can actually take a floating point array, which is really handy. Um, and to do that, we just do floats. Uh, I think this is the syntax to do s array like this. Um, I'm, not a, I'm not a Java man myself, so this may be the right notation, or maybe it's this. I think it's this. Well, anyway, and then we do for int i equals zero i less than um, amps.length. We'll find out in a second if it's the right syntax, I guess. Uh, plus plus i. And then just amps of i equals s of i. So just copy the values from the uh, array that's coming from max into the array that's stored in processing. Now let's run this jimmy jam. Promise never to say Jimmy Jam again. And now by tweaking these values in max, look at that, we can draw pretty pictures in processing. How exciting. So yeah, if you set, you can see how each sine wave is contributing to the thickness of each of these uh, bands in processing. I think it's pretty cool. And if you add them together, you get these kind of cool uh, patterns going on here. We could maybe play with the hues in a sec. Well, we'll do that in a second. So that's actually kind of the um, the bulk of what's uh, what you can do, or rather, that's the the you know point of departure for doing some other cool stuff. Um, if you happen to have the uh, ZSA the ZA descriptor objects, um, which are a bunch of really cool objects for doing sound uh, sound analysis in Max, then you can use those here to um, control these band thicknesses um, using uh, sound. So I'm going to open up the uh, ZA overview um, extra window here. If you don't have ZA descriptors, you can search for them online. Um, so anyway, once you've installed those according to the instructions, there's a super cool one in here called ZA.bark. And this computes the bark coefficients of a sound, uh, 25 of them. And these are just uh, different, the loudnesses are different parts of the spectral content and their BART coefficients are different from just energy because BART coefficients are scaled according to the human perceptual loudness. So high frequency sounds are perceived as louder than low frequency sounds and that kind of stuff. So I'm just gonna copy from this um, uh, za.easybark p normalized for display and this multi-slider down here. And I'm just gonna paste those directly into this patch. Um, delete this multi-slider and then connect this like so. Um, because this is max, well, first of all, first things first, this is now a 25 slider array. So I'm now gonna use, uh, jump back into processing and use 25 signs rather than five signs. Uh, what else? And now I just need a sound file. So I'm gonna use um, my buddy Derek's sound. Where the hell did it go? Would you copy, please? Oh, I see. It's added it many times at a place um, other than where I dragged it. Cool. Very, very useful. OK. So let's make an easy DAC here. Connect this up. And then when I start playing this track, you'll see, hopefully, if I turn audio on, you can see the uh, BART coefficients being uh, calculated down here in this um, multi-slider object. And now if we run the processing sketch, well, it was running, let's run it again. It's pretty cool, you can see the bands. Um, 
appearing and disappearing in response to the sound from Max. Um, so what are a couple, there's a couple of cute things that you can do just to make this a little bit more interesting. Um, maybe to kind of get your uh, creativity slash sense of experimentation at work here. Uh, one thing, instead of using one stroke hue, why not use several? Let's call it stroke hues and then make an array here like uh, 128, 180, 50 say and then down here uh, we can do we can set the stroke hue to be set the stroke to be equal to stroke hues of I mod stroke hues dot length and that will uh, alternate between the different bands, the different colors that you've picked. You can see that we're moving, there are three different colors here in this circle. Let's play this again so you can see a little bit more clearly. Uh, can also give these bands a little bit more thickness. So come down here um, and just maybe like I don't know, times sign sum times two. See how that looks. Let's make these bands a little bit thicker. Something else I like to do that's a little bit cool um, is you can also make the thicker bands like wiggle a little bit. So we can do float um, NX for the noise in X set that equal to random zero five say times sine sum uh, and do the same thing in y float and y is equal to random zero five times sine sum and then just add these values to offset the center of the circle you can see how this looks so that the thicker circles are also wigglier. I think that's pretty cool. It gives you a better sense of the, uh, makes kind of the thicker circles stand out a little bit more. Cool, so that's gonna do it for this tutorial. Um, damn, that one went pretty long, huh? That's not so bad. Um, thanks for watching. I hope that was enjoyable. I will post all these, the the patch as well as uh, sorry the patch as well as the sketch. And um, yeah, let me know if you have any other thoughts. I'd be happy to answer questions. And um, again, yeah, if you know somebody who uh, has some space in Paris in June, that would be great. Really appreciate it. Um, take it easy, guys, and I will see you in the next one.